in the shop, your ability to measure is so fundamental to the quality of everything you produce. These are my favorite six inch digital calipers and you can use these to measure all sorts of stuff and it's just gonna help you do your best work in the shop. So zero to six inch digital calipers. These are made by Mitutoyo in Japan. They're the absolute Digimatic. They're my favorite. Retail price on these is about $150 and I've gotten them on sale for just a little bit over $100, I think $109. I had these in my shop last year when I was working uh, at a CNC machine shop so I had a pair at work not in the shop anymore so I had to buy a second pair and uh, I'm really glad I have two pairs. It's awesome. I love these. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, I had crappier calipers for a while, you know, and I wished that I had a reason good enough to buy these, but I was kind of a cheapskate and I was like, well, I don't need it. And I think that was kind of bad logic. So for like $12 on Amazon, when I was getting started, I bought a pair of, you know, the same design basically, but just cheapo ones, $12. And, um, and they mostly did the same thing with the same features. They just, they didn't feel as nice and they weren't as repeatable or as accurate. And the reason that I think these are so important and why it's worth spending a fair amount of money on these and maybe not other measurement tools for the most part is uh is that you're gonna be using this all the time. So you're gonna be measuring the diameter of tubing, you're gonna be measuring uh, when you're facing the bottom bracket shell to width, you're gonna be measuring the width of that, uh, you know, you're gonna be measuring, uh, you can do roughly the wall thickness of tubing if you wanna know how thick head tube stock is or whatever. Um, what else is there? I, I Just recently I was doing bike mechanic work and I was having a hard time with my, uh, my shifter cable and the housing had an interference fit, there's a lot of friction and I was measuring the diameter of my shift cable, uh, you know, it's just a bike shop thing. You're using these all the time for all sorts of stuff. So for instance, this is a zero to one inch micrometer, micrometer, caliper. People are always mixing these up. Uh, this is a different thing. This is much more rigid. Uh, it's a pain in the ass to use one of these compared to like, these are so quick and they, they span a large range and just really quick and easy to use. These, it's more of a feel. You gotta, you, first you gotta, um, you gotta spin the anvil. You know, this is on a thread and this part's the anvil. You gotta spin it till you get to the right zone. And then you gotta, you gotta hold it like this, which takes a little bit of uh, familiarity. And then now if I want to measure uh, across, you know, it takes a while to screw this thing around. If I wanted to measure across here, you got to get square on there, and uh, so that, that, that's about it. And and now I can read my number is. Uh, there's some math involved because you gotta you gotta count all the stuff over here. So those are hundreds of thousands, or uh, yeah, tenths of tenths of an inch, and then you gotta add. It's it's not that hard, but anyway, it's just it's a lot more work uh, to to quickly do it. This gives you a number. It's it's a it's digits. It's digital. It's digits, <laughs> and it's so convenient. Uh, it's so fast. This will do inch and it'll do metric. You can calibrate it uh, really quickly with just, you press the origin button and you hold it down for a second. Uh, there's a lot of cool tricks with this. One of the things that a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, you can measure between the faces. You can measure the inside of something across here. Uh, this this uh, bottom piece that sticks out here, that uh, you, can, you can put this on a face and you can measure how deep a hole is, right? Um, and then one, one thing that people don't always know is that this face here and this face here, uh, you, can, you can measure the distance from the one face to the other. And the cool thing is that the number that's on here, uh, 892 and a half thousandths, that represents this distance and this distance and this all at the same time. You know, the whole thing moves in unison and so you don't have to like select which one you're using. They all move together, which is pretty cool. Um, being able to work with inch and metric on the same tool is so important because, at least in the United States, you're trapped in an inch world. You have end mills are inch, collets for your milling machine are inch, uh, raw material that you get if you're making any fixtures or tools are going to be you know, nominal, like fractional inch. Uh, so many things are in inches here, including some of the details on bikes, you know, fractional inch tubing and stuff. But then. Uh, most of the bike world is in millimeters and a lot of the rest of the world is in millimeters and a lot of that makes more sense than inch for certain things but you got to work back and forth at least to some degree now you can have a calculator and you can multiply and divide by 25.4 but if I'm gonna have a pair of calipers I want it to have both inch and metric built in and I want to be able to you know bring it up to you know 1 inch 182 whatever and then just press the the millimeter button and now it switches it converts for me I can go back and forth super easy 
Something that I didn't realize about these immediately when I started using them that's really cool is that you can do subtraction in here by zeroing it. So, for instance, if I was trying to, uh, th these are parts I'm machining for, for the Miter Daddy for a tool I'm making, but you can imagine uh, anything that you were doing in any sort of batch in the shop and you wanted to get com consistent results. Like this here is supposed to be, uh, there, one, one inch 625, it's right on size. I can zero it and now I can measure the next one and I can see how it compares. You know, it's a thousand thinner, totally within tolerance half a thousand thinner and and this just reads direct it tells me the number i'm not i don't need to know what number it is and do the math in my head i just need to know how far it's deviating from the number i want that's really cool another thing you can do is you can set it to the thickness of your part and now this one has a through hole but you can imagine if you had a blind hole that only went part way down and you wanted to know not how deep the hole was you wanted to know how much meat was left from the other side up you could measure the depth of the hole with this, and then you could do subtraction, take the total thickness minus the depth of the hole, and you'd be left with what's there. But on here, you can just zero it to the thickness of your part, and then you can poke down however far it is into the blind hole, and it'll tell you that the meat of what's left is 563 thousandths of an inch. It's really cool for certain tasks. Now, some of this is more uh, you know, machining centric than just frame building centric, but I feel like it is all related and it does come up sometimes. Th this is another pair of calipers I got. These are inch only and they're dial calipers. These span a larger distance, which is useful sometimes. Sometimes you got to measure something that's like eight inches and it's just a little bit too long, you know, or, or it's maybe like, you know, 11, 12 inches, right? And so uh, this is nice. I don't, I haven't found this to be as accurate. Generally tools, like the, the longer they measure, the less, uh, you know, you can't, you know, if, if you can trust this, it reads to half a thousandth of an inch. Uh, you can maybe trust it to like two thousandths of an inch or something if you're, if you're good with it maybe less and uh, this I would not trust to as fine of a number um, and, and it's fine for most of what I'm doing with it now the big you know, and I just wanted this around for the rare occasion that I need to measure something longer it usually is really worth having and they cost more to get bigger ones and if you get let's say uh, Mitu Toyo makes this in a four inch a six inch and an eight inch and probably a 12 and longer and um, you could get the eight inch if you thought you were gonna measure that stuff on occasion but then it's gonna be clumsier every other time you're using it. Six inches is a good size, and I think four inches is a popular option too, for the same reason that it's even smaller, it's really handy. Most of the stuff you measure, I mean, depending on what you do, is gonna be less than six inches. One of the things that's really nice about a dial face on a caliper is that, let's say I'm trying to get to the number, uh, you know, 20, I can sweep to it. And so, uh, generally, when you have digital stuff versus uh, things that, that have a sweeping action with a dial, dials can be really super nice because as you sweep up to your number, as you approach your number, you get this like intuitive visual sort of, um, it, your, I feel like your brain processes that a lot easier as you sweep up to a number. You know, like you're used to like sweeping your arm over to grab the mug of coffee, right? Uh, you're used to like that sort of motion. When it comes with numbers, you, your brain has to think. So you're at like 619 and now you're 619 and a half and you're coming up on 620 and you have to like think about it. It, it requires more brain power to slide this. You know, let's say I wanted to, to bring this to, um, you know, 22 millimeters so that I could scribe a line on something. So I can lock it with this, and now I can hook this, like I could, I could put it right here. If I wanted to scribe a line, I could, I could scribble with Sharpie, and then I could, could scribe a line here, and it would leave a little line on the edge. So I want to bring it to 22 millimeters first, and to get it exactly to 22, it just requires a little more brain power as I sweep up. And if you had a dial, and you're bringing it to a nice round number like that, it would be pretty awesome. So I think there's a place for that, but in the bike shop, uh, in, in the frame building world, in the bike world, you're trapped between millimeters and inches, and I would argue that uh, something like this is is so valuable and so worth it. You could buy, you know, this is another metrology uh, tool, you know, for measuring accurately. You can buy height gauges, you can buy uh, gauge pins, you can buy thread gate. There's like all these things that the, the machining world uh, gauge blocks uh, has developed for precision measuring. And I think that just like spending $100, uh, 150 bucks on a pair of these is gonna go further than most of the money you'd spend on the rest of everything else as far as frame building goes. You know, you're gonna need a, like a ruler that's a couple feet long. You're gonna want a tape measure around. You're gonna want a variety 
variety of things. But this is, I think, the one that really makes sense to spend uh, a decent dollar on because you're using it all the time and just being able to quickly get a good number and then not second guess it, not double check it, just to get a good number and then move on with things is so valuable. And I wish that I would have picked up one of these sooner. I hope you found the video helpful. Hope you learned something about uh, measuring or how to use calipers or <laughs> something. Uh, anyway, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next video.